good evening and welcome to Tim if I'm a little hot back there turn that down if I sound too loud but uh, welcome to eat a Wednesday night service have you had a good week so far if you haven't don't raise your hand <laughs> no but yeah it has been a good week God has been good and uh, and here we are our pastors are away again we're gonna have to uh, corral them back in here aren't we but uh, no, Andy and Sherilyn are in Pennsylvania, I believe at Penn's Creek, uh, at the school revival there at Penn View. And then brother and sister Stettler are in Southern Indiana at a traveling, our local IHC they call them. So let's remember them in prayer as they're away from us. So let's uh, have a word of prayer before we start. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for this time that we have to set aside and refocus our week on you and to draw closer to you helping everything that's said and done tonight help it to be all done for your honor and glory and help us to leave here tonight further up the road spiritually and we'll give you the praise amen at this time brother Tallman will lead the singing all right get your hymnals turn to uh, hymn number 466 466 say yes to the Lord. Amen. Hope you've said yes to him and you keep saying yes to him. Amen. You know, that's always a good policy with your spouse to keep saying yes. But uh, I don't mean anything by that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's a good thing, you know. <laughs> but when we say yes to the Lord, that's even more important. And he always knows what's best. Thank the Lord. Turn a few more pages to 468. 468. <clears throat>
pages further, 473. 473. in those songs and thankful for Brother Tallman and all he does for our church. And uh, if you haven't thanked him, you ought to thank him sometime. He does a lot of work and uh, we really appreciate it. All right, at this time, we're going to go to prayer and um, let's remember our country. Um, without getting too political, our country's in an absolute disastrous mess, but nothing takes God by surprise, does it? And uh, Sometimes I catch myself, I'm like, Woo, and then I'm like, Lord, yeah, you know what's going on. You know, there's no need for me to fret and stew about it because that just gets me messed up and uh, takes my trust out of what God's doing. So uh, let's lean on him, but let's pray that his will be done. Sometimes we don't understand his will, now do we? But we know he's all sovereign. He knows exactly what's going on. So we can rest in that. And then uh, we have an update on uh, Luke Hayes. Uh, let me pull my phone back open here. Uh, said his um, swelling and stuff has gone down. He actually looks normal now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's continue to remember him. It's still, he has a slow time chewing. And uh, so it's going to take a little bit of recovery. An accident happened out here, I guess it was a week or two ago. 
he tripped over his brother and knocked his two front teeth or front teeth here somewhere loose so they had to repair that so let's remember him if you've ever had dental work done you know what that's about so let's remember him but glad he's doing better uh, and let's remember the settlers and the strouds as they're away um, we miss them when they're gone but we're glad that they can be used somewhere else also to help minister for God anyone else I'm going to ask uh, Brother Howell if you would lead us in prayer a little bit anybody else have a request the wits let's remember yes let's please remember the wits in a special way Renee Oh, let's remember Sherry Martinoli. Anyone else? The Coopers. The Coopers, yes. Let's remember Brother and Sister Cooper. Uh, I know they would love to be here. So let's remember them in a special way. God can go there and meet with them this evening while we're in service. He can meet with them anytime. But I um, pray that the Lord will help them and keep them encouraged. It would have to be discouraging not to be able to get out and go to church. So let's remember them. Uh, let's continue to remember Sister Albertson. Thank the Lord for uh, how he's been helping her. And uh, let's continue to remember the others. Uh, Litchfield, let's remember them in a special way. Sister Winkler. Oh, okay. That's good news. <clears throat> Let's remember them. And remember him in a special way. I, I think about him, I'm thinking he's a young guy, and, you know, he'd want to get up and go do things. But uh, let's really especially pray for him that he stay encouraged. And Sister Man? All right. All righty. Let's remember her. Yep, that's right. Remember my father-in-law and uh, Betty that they're they've been in and out of the hospital. Are they both home now? Yeah. Yeah. So let's remember them. He's home. So let's remember. Let's remember them in a special way. Anyone else? Aren't you glad we take our request to a? God that knows exactly what to do. It's kind of humbling, actually, if you think about it, that I get to present my case, your case, to the master of the universe. And uh, <laughs> that's a humbling thought, that he even would think about listening to our prayer, but so thankful that we serve a God like that this evening. All righty, let's, uh, let's stand, and uh, Brother Hallam will lead us in prayer.
God that wants to give good gifts to us that is just waiting for us to ask. And tonight, we just come to you and ask that you give us our needs. We think of tonight of Malia, she's in the military, we just ask that you give her just the support she needs right now to help her mentally, physically, emotionally, in just every way to just have the resources that can only come from you. I pray that I don't know where she's at spiritually, I just ask that during this time that she draw close to you. We pray for the service tonight. go through other activities during this worship service, that you would speak to our hearts and help us to have open minds and ears to what it is you have for us. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Matt, for leading us in prayer. Got a couple of announcements I want to share with you, and then we'll go right into testimonies. So this is your this is your warning if you needed one, uh, but testimonies are right around the corner. Uh, a couple announcements to share. Obviously, our pastors are gone, so you'll be uh, graced with uh, my interpretation of the Bible tonight. So we'll see we'll see how that goes. So be praying for me uh, as you sit there. Uh, and then also, if that's not good enough, we have some beautiful flowers out here in the foyer that were donated. And uh, so uh, please help yourself to those flowers out in the foyer. Uh, some of you guys maybe can beat your wives out there, slip out during prayer, pick out some nice flowers, and I'll maybe preach long enough they forget about the whole flower thing. You can go put it in the car and, you know, be like, hey, look what I picked up for you. Um, so those flowers are out there. And then for the young people, uh, Caitlin Marshall is heading up a Bible study starting this next Sunday night, and it will start 15 minutes before youth service. So if, if you're able to, um, typically a lot of people kind of show up a little before youth service, and so we said, you know, we'll kind of just play with that time frame a little bit, and uh, it might run a little into youth service. We'll see how it works out. But uh, 5 o'clock, if you're able to attend that, um, uh, that'll be Sunday night around youth service, and that's for the young ladies. Uh, if you want to know what young ladies mean, you can talk to Caitlin about that. Um, I'm not going to get into that territory, um, or I'll need a lot more flowers than that are out there. But uh, we'll, we'll uh, be looking forward to that, and I appreciate her willingness to do that. And now you're probably thinking, well, we've got a boy and a girl. What do we do with our boy while the girls are doing that? Well, we're going to have a Bible study for the boys as well, but no one's told me who's leading it yet. So, this Sunday night might just be me leading it, or Blake is a college student at God's Bible School and College, and I think he said he might be able to get twisted into doing it. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, I, I know Andrew had mentioned possibly being involved in that. But uh, So there'll be something for the guys as well at that time. Um, but thank you, Caitlin, for kind of heading that up, and we'll look forward to it. All right. Well, we want to hear testimonies from you, a chance to give God praise, and I can tell you right now that it's, it has potential to be better than the message tonight, so yes, Caitlin. next Thank you. 
Sure. You know, it's not just a country, but it's a community. It's a citizenship of heaven. The fellows, brothers, sisters of Christ. You know, I just want to live uh, in this world, but not of this world, so that I prepare for that day when Jesus return and make the right way. That's true. That's good. I got picked on the other night, you know, they said, I'm not going to be like Eli and list all these categories that people need to testify from. I'm just saying, I think that makes it easier for people to get comfortable testifying. I'm not going to let you cop out that easy tonight. If you need to testify, I'm just going to let you do it. I'm not going to do all of that stuff, I guess. But if you need to testify, yes. It's true. It's true. Uh, Emily. Good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
That's good. That's good. That's good. It's funny this song I have decided to follow Jesus in a turning back and turning back. And Isaac's testimony also reminded me of how I was raised, what my dad drilled in. I just want to testify, I guess, and say that there was an area here recently where I was helping someone pray, and just on the way to church tonight, I received a text saying that God had answered that prayer, and that it was it was looking good, and it was looking promising, and so I just want to give praise to God that uh, that he, he still answers prayer, and he answered my prayers here recently. Hey, who else? It's hard for me not to do the whole category calling thing. I don't know if I, maybe I'm not good with the awkward silence. I don't know. I, I thought I was, but maybe that's the problem. I think I'm just a talker. And so the silence, it's like, I got to talk. Uh, all right, I don't want to uh, cut anyone off, Sister Elton. Well, I just want to say again then, uh, another testimony. I'll take two. But uh, I'm just so thankful for what God's doing for Burlington. It's just, it's such a privilege to just be able to see God work in our church and, and to see it last Sunday and to, to see it through the families. And uh, it's, you look at some of the people we've been praying for over the last few months and even year, and it just... You, you, it's just so neat to see God working. And it might not be as fast as we want or how, how we would like, but it's just so encouraging to see God working in our church and in our community, to see, to see some community families being reached and being pulled in more. And that's just so encouraging. And I'm just so grateful for what God's doing there. And, and I just want to give him praise for that. And... I'm going to give everyone a chance just because I, I think I'm a, I just, I just can't help it. But uh, if you just want to give God glory and he's just answered a prayer or something for you, he's just lifted a heavy moment for you or he just met you in a difficult time in the past week. And if that's too hard for you to think back, you can add on a second week. But if he's just done that, why don't you just lift your hands and praise to him? But God has been so good to us, and I'm so grateful for that. Well, I know you're all excited to hear me preach, and that's why we kind of had less testimonies tonight, probably. But uh, let's see here. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I have ADHD. 
<laughs> Maybe that's not a surprise to some of you, but I just, I was kind of sitting up here and I was like, this sermon outline does not look like any other sermon outline I've ever done. And I don't, I don't know. I just, I think I get tired of one thing after so long and I'm like, you know, let's just switch it or so. I don't know if that's, if that's the case, but, uh, I think I might have a little ADHD or something with the way I format sermons. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. This is going to be a new style tonight and just be thankful because about out here at the traffic light, it just kind of popped in my head. I was like, that'd be so fun if I just had, you know, people act out my Bible story for tonight. And then I was like, I don't know how in the world I would do that. I'll share my Bible story here in a minute. And you'll be like, I don't know how in the world he was going to do that. And who knows? I guess I haven't really decided against it yet. We'll see. But uh, I, I think I just tend to be a little ADHD in my thoughts sometimes. So the people in my car kind of kept me in line. Actually, I don't know if they did. They wanted me to do it. They didn't even know what I was preaching on, but they were just like, yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, but and then a couple of them asked me how long I was preaching. and I said, well, here's what I'll do. However many young people there are in the back of the church sitting, I'll just count that number up and times it by two. And that's how many minutes I'll preach. And so really the back of the chapel kind of is just sub subject to my opinion, I guess. So you could all be in the back. I don't know. We'll see. And young people's also subject to subjective, I guess. But anyways, there's that ADHD kicking in because um, there we are. All right, we're going to get started and I'm going to ask, and along with the ADHD, I just don't care if things don't go perfect to plan sometimes. So I'm going to, I'm going to just try this. And if it doesn't work, I've tried it before and it didn't work. It, it, it'll eventually work, but I'm going to see if Levi Wilson would be willing to uh, just say a word of prayer uh, over this message part. Would you be willing to do that, Levi? He's got a loose tooth, so I don't know if he'll be able to or not. Do you think he'd be up for that? Okay, all right, that's all right, because I think Aiden was maybe willing. Okay, it was Sophia. Sophia was going to do it. You don't have a choice, Sophia. All right, <laughs> Sophia, go ahead. Amen. Thank you, Wilson family, for helping out there. Asher sounded like he wanted to do it, but we'll wait a couple more years there. I guess what I'm trying to do with that is not only involve the younger people in church, because I guess I'm the youth pastor, I'm supposed to do that every now and then, but I think I just enjoy making everybody nervous when I get up here, you know? I think I just enjoy that because the young people are already nervous. They're like, oh, great. What's, what's he going to have us do? Act out the Bible story? And now I kind of want the younger kids to be like, oh, boy, he might call on me to pray. And you adults, I already know, you're just nervous about what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, boy. But, well, I am too. My wife is as well. And that's why she's not here tonight. Just, no. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Unfortunately, she was not feeling well. And she'll appreciate your prayers. But, but uh, tonight, uh, we are going to be looking at the book of Mark, chapter 5. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Mark, chapter 5. And as we're turning there, some of the young people are going to help read this for me just because I just get too nervous up here and so I just start reading and all this small print Bible gets smaller and smaller. I don't know if it's my age or what, but uh, we're going to start with Eliana Wilson. She's going to start us off with verse one and she's going to read a couple of verses and then Caitlin will read some, Emma will read some, and Kara will read some. And we're going to try to get to verse 20, ladies. So that's like five each of you, okay? All right.
Thank you, ladies, for helping me out with that. I appreciate it and very thankful you did it because even as I was following along, my eyes were going all over the place and maybe it's my eyes that have the ADHD. I don't know. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about this, this story that we find here in Mark chapter 5 and, and the man with the, with the evil spirits. And I want to, I just kind of want to take a look at this and if it's okay with you, maybe we can just kind of use this as a little bit of a Bible study. You know, we'll just have a big Bible. That's what Wednesday nights are for anyways, I think. But it'll just be a Bible study. And we'll kind of look at some things and uh, it'll be a one-sided Bible study. I'll share my, my opinion and you just have to accept it. So that's the plan, more or less. Um, but uh, we're, we're, we're looking here at the 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 story and and it focuses on an oppressed man who who has these demon spirits that have taken over his body and uh the key verse here that i want us to focus on is is mark chapter 5 verse 9 where it reads and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many and how many of you one of those rabbit trails. We'll have many of them tonight. How many of you have ever heard the whole illustration about the, the four travelers that went into the wilderness and they were looking for the first time they would see an elephant and the first traveler touched the elephant's uh, nose thingy trunk and was like, man, this thing's like a massive snake. And then the second traveler touched the leg and was like, no, nah, this is a tree. And then the one touched its stomach and was like, no, this is like a brick wall. And then the other touched the tail and it's like, no, this is rope. Have you guys all heard that? If you hadn't, you just did. That was pretty much it. I thought that illustration was a little like too used. So I, I was like, I'm going to come up with my own. All right. So this story, probably a lot of you are familiar with this story. And uh, I, I like to think that there's different perspectives that we can glean from stories. Um, we're all kind of preaching from the same Bible, hopefully. And so sometimes it's interesting when you get different perspectives. And tonight I want to share a perspective that I had kind of seen from it. And I've shared with a few people and, then, and they've kind of told me, you know, I've never, never really looked at it that way. And I was like, well, OK, I'm going to run with this then. Um, and uh, so, so tonight, instead of the whole elephant scenario, we're just going to be standing in a room. And on the far side of the room, there's a beautiful window. And there's two people on this back wall. Both of them can look out that window and see the beautiful, beautiful uh, scenery outside the window. But all around the window is this mirror. It's like a mirror wall, okay? So the one person looks out the window and says, man, it is a gorgeous day out. The scenes are so beautiful and vibrant. It's so gorgeous. And the second person's kind of just focused on the mirror and saying, I don't know, the scenes are kind of ugly and hideous. I don't know if I like it that much. <laughs> I get it, it's a, it's a little joke. Um, but <laughs> it's because uh, they're looking at themselves in the mirror instead of looking out the window. So tonight we're going to be trying to look out the window and kind of take another perspective there. Uh, I should have stuck with the elephant illustration, I suppose. But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> the first point that I want to make tonight um, is that God... When he asked the question in Mark chapter 5, verse 9, what is thy name? I'm going to be coming from the perspective that God isn't speaking to the demons. God's not speaking to the evil spirits. God's talking to the person. God's talking to the human element of this man. When Jesus crossed the Sea of the Galilee, he didn't come looking for demons. He wasn't coming to minister to the demons. He, he, was, he came looking for a man in need of freedom. So when Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee, he already knew of this man. He already knew that he was coming looking for a man in need of freedom. The demons were not the focus in this story. The man was. And that's kind of the perspective I want to take from this. And, and it... it if you look at verse 6, it says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran up and worshipped him. The man saw Jesus coming and ran up to worship him. 
Jesus didn't ask for the man's demons. He, he, he didn't, he wasn't, I'm going from the perspective that he wasn't speaking to the demons. He asked the man for his name. This shows us that God doesn't just see the struggles that entangle us, but that he sees the real person inside of those struggles, longing for a freedom. He wasn't speaking to the demons as much as he was reaching to the man's true self. How often is it that we focus on our own struggles, our own sins, forgetting that God is calling us by name? that God is seeing us who we are beyond those struggles. So the first thing I wanna glean from this Bible study tonight is just that God sees the person. God's not, God's not talking, God's not addressing the demons. He's, he's addressing the person. What is your name? The question, what is your name? This is a foundational question in any relationship. Kids, if you look to your parents, I, I would guarantee you at some point there came along the question, what was your name again? Your friends, you're asking, what, what is your name? It is one of the most foundational questions in any relationship. What is your name? It's so foundational that that it's one, often one of the first things learned in other languages. ¿Qué es su nombre? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te amas? Probably butchered that. Sister Hill will correct me afterwards. And then in French, it's comment to tapilias. <laughs> and Ukrainian is a backwards R, a lowercase K, a T, an E, something that looks like a grapefruit and some other stuff. Don't know what's going on there. But it's often one of the first things learned in any language because it's so key to any relationship you build. You want to be able to address someone by their name. And it, sh it shows God asking this man, what is thy name? It shows the man's separation from his true identity in God. It shows how far this man got separated. And so when God asked this question, it wasn't because he didn't know the answer. Like we said earlier, God crossed the Sea of Galilee knowing very well that he was going to set this man free. So it wasn't that God didn't know the answer. It was because this man had lost his sense of self. He was so defined by the evil spirits within him, but God wanted him to rediscover who he truly was. God knew him, but the man didn't know God. He had become a stranger to the one who created him. And so what, what if God stopped you today? Maybe as you're leaving or as you're going home or anything, what if God just stopped you today and asked you, what is your name? What is your name? Do you know who you are in Christ? Or are you lost in the chaos of life, defined by work or other relationships or distractions? But what is your name? So my first point was God sees the man, not the demons. God saw the person, not the struggles. My second point was that the question, what is your name? What is your name? My third point, I want to discuss the, the, the modern day legions. The things that could be affecting our name. And so if we look at if we look at this oppression that this man faced and we translate it into into a more modern day's context, what would it look like? What if it was the everyday things that dominate our lives today, like that job that keeps us from having a meaningful relationship with God? 
or that job that keeps us from what we know God is expecting from us. Or those relationships that we know are not fruitful to our walk with God. We say, well, it's, it's my ministry to be friends with this guy, but in all reality, it's just dragging you deeper and deeper. Or maybe it's not the job, maybe it's not the, the relationships, but maybe it's, it's the forms of entertainment that you utilize. Or maybe it's like the books or different things that you're doing, the music, the different activities. It, it doesn't have, I'm so used to saying young people, I almost called y'all young people. But then I looked up and I saw Tim Stamper back there and I reminded myself, I am just kidding. It doesn't have to be evil things that become idols in our life. In this man's life, it was evil spirits that oppressed him. In your life, it could be, it could be something good. It could be something that's not harmless when you look at it objectively, but it is harming your relationship with God. Uh, verse 13 here reads, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the pigs, the swine. What modern day legions are possessing you? What, what, what is it? Is it the obsession for success or, or your fixation on entertainment or constant need for something that isn't God honoring? Just as Jesus freed this man he can free you as well from anything that binds us. So what is it tonight that you need freedom from? What modern day idols have taken the place of your true identity in Christ? So my first point, God saw the man, not the demons. God sees the person, not the struggles. My second point, what is your name? God's asking you, what is your name? What is your identity? The third point, we talked about the different idols in our life, the modern day legions. And my fourth here, testimonies didn't go long enough, so I wasn't able to finish it, but just kidding. The fourth, once the man was free, that wasn't the end. Once the man was free, that wasn't the end. My fourth point is this, know your story. After the man was freed, he had a story to tell. Jesus didn't tell him to follow. He sent him back to share his testimony. He sent him back to the community. He, this, this man, if you, if you read the scripture, if you look at the story, living in the graveyards. By the way, we could spend a whole night just talking about that. But he's living in the graveyards, the tombs. And Jesus sends him back to the community and, and saying, you have a story, go tell your story. The power of his story became a witness to those around him. Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. Verse 19 reads, This man's testimony was no longer about demons, but about the grace and power of Jesus. Knowing your story, your journey of faith is crucial. It's not just about how well you know the scriptures or theology or being able to grammatically construct a sermon with one basic outline that you use every time, but it's about knowing your story. It's about how well you know the one who set you free and being able to share that. So my final point, my final question in this is, is what is your story? How has Jesus freed you? And are you sharing that with others? Are you sharing your story with others? Are you sharing your freedom with others? Now you might be thinking, well, 
My freedom's a really long one to share. You, you don't have to share the origin point of your freedom. But every day, are you sharing the freedom that you have in Jesus? Are you sharing it at the grocery stores? I'm not talking about going around talk, giving everyone your life story about the day that this happened and this happened and this happened. But are you living a life that reflects Jesus Christ? Are you able to shine brightly for him? I imagine this, this, this man freed from these evil spirits, him walking into his community, it was a night and day difference. Are you living that night and day difference for Jesus? God calls us by name. Just as he called the man he freed from legion, the question, what is your name? This question challenges us to reflect on who we are in Christ, free from idols and distractions that separate us and cloud our identity. Just as this man was restored, God wants to restore you to your true self, calling you out from whatever holds you captive to it today. So my first point, God sees the man, not the demons. God sees the man. God, God crosses the Sea of Galilee. And when he asks, what's thy name? He's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. And maybe, maybe you're in a place where, where you feel like, well, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm through this point of life. I'm through this point in the, my faith journey where, where I, I know that I'm, I'm released from my demons. I'm, I'm released from that. That's all behind me. And maybe, maybe you're at that point already. And I know we're, we're going to the elephant story because I guess not everyone has ADHD brains. And so we'll have to stick with the elephants. But, and maybe, maybe you've, you've seen the trunk of the elephant and you've said, I've relinquished all of my demons. There's no sin blocking my relationship. There's no, there's no idols. There's no distractions. Maybe you're saying that, and if that's you, great. But ask God, God, what do you want me to glean from this? That's what I found myself doing every time I just, I go, as I was preparing for this, every time I went back into it, I just said, God, let me look at it from this perspective. Let me look at it from another perspective here. And I just kept doing that, and I kept shifting until I made a full 360 around that big elephant. Probably can't say the word fat from the pulpit. But I just did a 360 from around that big elephant and, and asked God, what can I learn from this? And he'll be faithful to show you. And if that's... If that's where you're at, just, just do that. I know God will show you. God sees the man, not the demons. The point I was going with that was that God sees you. If, if you're squared away, there's no idols in your life, then just rest in the fact that God sees you. God sees you in your troubles right now. He sees you in your difficulties. God sees you. The second point, what is your name? And then, of course, we talked about the idols of our lives. And then knowing your story, shining for Jesus, showing that love for Jesus. What's holding you back from, from hearing God call your name? Whatever it is, let's just take a step closer today to God. Why don't you stand with me? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be here tonight and to gather into your house. 
Lord God, we just ask that you would use this time, that, that uh, even following this, Lord, that the, the words from this, God, would just, would just be used for your purpose, Lord, for, for without your will, without your purpose, Lord. This is just a meaningless gathering, Lord. And God, we just ask, Lord, for, for your continued presence, Lord, as, as you be with us through the remainder of the week. And Lord, that you would just take these words that I've shared and God, that you would just help them to translate into the areas that you, you need them for each person, God, including myself, Lord. Lord, would you just be with us, Lord? Would you help us, God, to, to be aware of where we stand in a relationship with you, to be aware of all that, all that we are, God, and, and Jesus, would you just help us, we pray. Lord, thank you for, for your mercy, your love, and your forgiveness. And would you just help us the remainder of this evening and this week, we pray. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you all for coming tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed.